We talk about Easter eggs pretty often on the channel, but with the new Call of Duty game getting teased in Warzone, we thought it would be good to look back at other games that tried to pull similar tricks. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Easter eggs that teased a future game. Starting off at number 10, it's Halo 3 ODST. Here's a pretty interesting one we kind of forgot about. Remember Halo ODST, the kind of standalone expansion game to Halo 3, where you play as an orbital drop shock trooper, aka not the Master Chief. So in a lot of ways, the game was pretty different compared to the rest of the series. It added a pretty cool little campaign, but what's particularly interesting for our purposes is the Destiny teaser. Yeah, a full four years before Destiny was officially revealed and five years before it actually came out, out, there was a teaser that was about as cryptic as it gets, and it's easy to see why players at the time might have just passed by, but while exploring the hub area, the place you travel around and listen to the jazzy soundtrack between main missions, you can find this poster that says, Destiny Awaits, with a picture of the Earth and a suspicious white ball beside it. These days, people are quick to point out that it's the Traveler, that the big ball, that thing that is central to the lore of the Destiny series, but I don't know, it, it just looks like the moon to me. The Halo Wiki describes describes it as the Traveler, and most online discussions I've found just say it's a Traveler, so that's probably what it is. Another thing that supports the argument that it's the Traveler is the fact that the image was altered when ODST was added to the Master Chief Collection. The orb became much more obviously the moon. Also, they completely edited out the Destiny Awaits part, as Microsoft didn't own the rights to the game. But from what we can tell, development on Destiny was in its early stages around the time that ODST came out, so it's kind of surprising that this teaser is even identified as anything Destiny related. A lot of games changed dramatically in pre-production, but Bungie must have had at least some idea what they were doing with Destiny. At number 9 is Uncharted 3, another infamous one. At the very start of Uncharted 3, someone at Naughty Dog snuck in a reference to their still unannounced next game, The Last of Us. It's pretty easy to spot if you're looking for it. There's a newspaper with the headline, Scientists are still struggling to understand deadly fungus, which is very obviously a reference to the Cordyceps fungus that sets off the events of the entire Last of Us series. You'd think this was meant to be a sly tease for the future, but that's not actually true. Naughty Dog wanted their big new franchise to be a surprise when they announced it, at least according this Kotaku article and planned on announcing the game before the release of Uncharted 3, so the newspaper was supposed to be a reference to an already known about game, not a future franchise tease, which is what it ended up being. Naughty Dog apparently just forgot about it and left it in by mistake. It's hard to imagine such a detail-oriented developer like them making a mistake like that, but it's not like it was a big deal in the long run. It's also a pretty cool little teaser on its own, but the fact that it wasn't even meant to be a teaser is actually pretty interesting. At number 8 is Grand Theft Auto 4. It's a pretty small one, but in the game, they actually tease the next location in the series. The kick isn't in Nico Bellic's story. This little tease was actually hidden in the DLC episodes from Liberty City. But to make it even more obscure, the only way you could see this was if you had a physical copy that they released packaging the two add-on campaigns. Yeah, we're going old school here because they hid this thing in the instruction manual. Most games didn't even have instruction manuals by this point, so I imagine most people barely even gave the manual a second glance and we've still got it too yeah the box is a little beat up but here's the teaser on page 13 down in the right corner it says pretty small uh liberty city it's over the next stop with part of the page looking like it's torn with another page underneath it's a pretty obvious tease because fans of the series were already looking for secrets everywhere so when this got out fan speculation went crazy people thought that the tear shape meant something or thought that the image underneath was a big clue it's pretty obvious these days that they went back to san andreas for gt a5, but back then people had no idea. The actual tease was about as vague as it gets, but that's just Rockstar for you. And number 7 is Twilight Princess HD. Did you know that Nintendo actually teased Breath of the Wild in Twilight Princess HD? It wasn't the first time they pulled something like this either. Skyward Sword got teased in Ocarina of Time 3D as well. The Easter egg in Twilight Princess was a little less obvious though. You can find it by looking in the paintings in Hyrule Castle Town inside Chudley's store. It just looks like a landscape painting, so it doesn't stand out too much. But if you've seen the initial trailer to Breath of the Wild, you'll immediately notice that these shots are identical. This is an Easter egg hiding in plain sight, and a lot of people never made the connection because, you know, Twilight Princess HD was a Wii U exclusive, which wasn't exactly the most popular system, especially compared to the Wii and the Switch. It is a cool Easter egg if you notice it, though. 
And number six is Pokemon X and Y. Pokemon games love to throw in references to other games in the series. Uh, one recurring Easter egg specifically is the Game Freak offices, which recreate the actual Pokemon developers offices in the game and often have little background details about making the games and developer anecdotes. But one of the most interesting teases in the series can be seen in Pokemon X and Y, where you can meet this mysterious backpacker who will give you cryptic clues about a region you've never been to before. He'll mention something and it will end with, ah, never mind. You'll see it in due time, which makes it pretty clear the place he's talking about is meant to be the location of the next game. After talking to him four times, he'll give you this item called a strange souvenir, which the description says is an ornament depicting a Pokemon that is venerated as a protector in some region far from Kalos. Considering the Kalos region is basically Pokemon's version of France, the next region, Alola, which is actually the Pokemon Hawaii, is pretty damn far away. The souvenir doesn't actually do anything, it's basically just a big paperweight, but it's pretty interesting interesting in terms of teasing a location that ended up being pretty different to the other regions introduced in the series up till that point. And number five is Watch Dogs 2. Here's a funny tease that ended up going absolutely nowhere. In Watch Dogs 2, there's a pretty meta mission called UV Stolen, where you literally steal a trailer from an upcoming game and leak it online to gain followers. The whole thing was making fun of the many, many leaks that Ubisoft has suffered in the past. It feels like most of Ubisoft's announcements get leaked ahead of time these days, so, I mean, they were even making fun of it back then when this game came out. The trailer that you downloaded in the game wasn't meant to be a joke, it was an actual trailer for a game that Ubisoft was currently developing called Pioneer. It didn't show much, but it was definitely something different for the company, some kind of space game. Because it's so vague, I've seen a number of people compare it to the Starlink game Ubisoft put out recently, but as far as I can tell, neither of these two projects are related. Still, if you know anything about this, then you know that it wasn't meant to be. Pioneer was cancelled uh, with little fanfare a couple of years later, making this mission a tease for pretty much nothing. It's a fun idea, it's nice to see a developer make fun of themselves a little bit, but the the fact that Pioneer never actually came out took a little bit of the bite out of this supposed leak. At number four, uh, in Oblivion and Morrowind, there were hints at Skyrim. There is so much lore and prophecy in the Elder Scrolls series, it's hard to tell what's a legitimate sequel tease and what's just some random bit of lore that the developers decided to do something with later. But either way, it's pretty cool to see how this series, which in many ways seems very disconnected, actually has a lot of things tying these games together. And some of it goes way back. Like in Oblivion, uh, you can find references to Alduin's return, who is the main antagonist of Skyrim in the Shivering Isles, or how the Greybeards, a major faction in the main story of Skyrim, get mentioned in Oblivion. Some of these references go all the way back to Morrowind, which actually introduced a lot of the stuff in Skyrim in some of the books you can find scattered around. Stuff like High Hrothgar, the Greybeards again, and even the whole concept of the Shout get mentioned in that game. There's even an NPC who references dragons known as Mike, which appear in Oblivion and Morrowind, but they were more to make fun of fans who wanted Bethesda to bring dragons back rather than actually tease the return of dragons in a future game. Of course, Bethesda went back on that and went dragon crazy for Skyrim, but for a while they were pretty anti-dragon. There's still a surprising amount of references to stuff in Skyrim in these old games, and if you're big into Elder Scrolls lore, there's a lot to dig into. And number three is Alan Wake. Now, Control has a ton of these little Easter eggs and references to their past games, especially Alan Wake, the Twin Peaks slash Stephen King Energizer Battery Collection Simulator. There's so many references to those games, it's hard to even call them Easter eggs. They're just directly connecting the events of Alan Wake to Control. And while all this information is inevitably teasing a possible future Alan Wake 2, at the moment we can't say for sure. But one thing we can say is that Alan Wake actually teased Control way before it came out. The teaser appears in Alan Wake's American Nightmare, the little standalone game that follows the events of the original game. In it, you can hear the song Balance Slays the Demon. If you play the audio backwards and listen to it really closely, you can hear the message, it will happen again in another town called Ordinary. That might sound meaningless, but if you remember, the protagonist of Control, Jesse Faden, actually comes from a town called Ordinary, and that's the location that basically sets off the entire plot. It's hard to say if the game they were teasing in American Nightmare was at all like what Control eventually became, but either way, the town of Ordinary is an important part of Control's backstory, so it's directly, definitely a reference. At number two is Metroid Prime 3. We've mentioned teases for games that eventually come out and teases for games that were canceled, but this one is unique because it is both. In Metroid Prime 3, you find a terminal in the Space Pirate homeworld that says this, 
Metroid Project Dread is nearing the final stages of completion. At the time, they basically put this in as a joke, making light of the often rumored game Metroid Dread, which is going to be a return to the series side-scrolling routes. This was all the way back in 2007, and this little teaser sparked the imaginations of Metroid fans everywhere, but as the years went by and there was no mention of this supposedly new game, people started to give up hope. Of course, we now know that it is a real thing. In 2021, they finally announced the game, and it's exactly what fans wanted, a new side-scrolling entry on the Switch. That's almost 15 years after the project was teased in Metroid Prime 3, which has to be a record for probably one of the longest release teases of all time. Of course, because Nintendo is so tight-lipped about development, we don't really know if Metroid Dread was a real thing back then, or if it was actually cancelled. With the actual game coming out soon, it's a hell of a tease, and it's pretty funny to go back and revisit this little reveal. And finally at number one, Batman Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Batman Arkham Knight. And of course, this is number one. What else could it be? One of the most hidden Easter eggs for one of the most hotly anticipated sequels of all time was the Easter egg in Arkham Asylum that revealed Arkham City was so infamously difficult to find that developers basically told people what to do so they'd find it. In the warden's office, you can bomb a completely unmarked wall to find a secret room containing his plans for an Arkham City, which, as we all know, ended up being what the sequel was about. What made this so difficult to find was that there wasn't a crack or anything to tell you that it's a bombable wall, but you had to bomb the spot multiple times for the wall to eventually break. That's the thing that really threw people. They'd bomb pretty much every surface in the entire game trying to find secrets, but people didn't think the developers would be so devious as to make you do it a bunch of times. As a result, the teasers that they put in the following games were easier to find. In Arkham City, you could find a cryptographic sequencer that opened a hatch to Scarecrow's hideout, setting up the events of Arkham Knight. Even Arkham Knight has a sequel tease hidden in it. If you play the Wayne Manor Predator map, you can interact with this piano and reveal a secret room that's teased Batman Arkham VR. Basically, Rocksteady loves leaving little Easter eggs for future games in the Batman series. None of them are quite as good as the one in Arkham Asylum, which is an all-time great Easter egg, but they're still pretty cool. Couple of bonus ones for you. In Kingdom Hearts, uh, we're talking basically about all the bonus endings here. They're a huge pain to get, and they almost don't even qualify as Easter eggs, but the developers love to hide big reveals for future games in these things, so they're worth mentioning. Finally, in Witcher 3, Siri mentioned Cyberpunk 2077. Like, everybody knows about this by now, but at least we've got to mention it here, because it's basically one long line of dialogue in a 100-hour game, but there it is. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.